Got rhubarb. Tonight we're going to party like it's fourteen ninety five. into a pan on the stove. Now I'm actually getting ready to make multiple recipes, so I'm not gonna to be too exact with how I do this. GoPro cameras suck. We are going to heat this up until that is softened. As the rhubarb is starting to get so soft, you want to add about three cups of strawberries and keep them on the heat until they are soft also. Next, you're going to add the contents of what's in the pan either to a blender, food processor, or use an immersion blender to chop up any large chunks that are left over. This is kind of what it looks like. I've turned the stove down. I'm getting ready to move it off the burner and I'll go ahead and uh, let it cool for a couple minutes and then use the immersion blender to finish chopping it up into smaller pieces. Next thing you're gonna do is add four tablespoons of lemon juice. You're also going to add one box of pectin. I'm actually using the powdered pectin that's not in the box, so it's three tablespoons. Make sure you get that whisk up pretty quick. You don't want that to set in there. Then you're going to add eight cups of sugar. This is the eight cups of sugar. The steam got me. Now I'm going to give us a stir. Now we need to, you need to bring the temperature up on this until you're between 217 and 222 degrees while stirring vigorously. We are pretty much a long way off.
you definitely want to make sure that you're stirring this because if you're not stirring it then the temperature inside the pan is not equal and you want 217 to 222 degrees that's at sea level if you're higher than sea level subtract two degrees for every 1000 feet Temperature is the most critical thing about making jellies and jams. You also want to make sure you've already got your jars prepared if you're canning this. And make sure you've got a canner with water already heating up. I got a canner on the other side of this pan. It's already got water boiling. I've already got my jars ready to go. So all I need to do is bring this up to temperature. We're up to about 200 degrees right now. Ouch! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, you can kind of see on my whisk that it's already gelled up there. That's a pretty good sign, but I will go ahead and uh, do a freezer test. I actually forgot to stick my plate in the freezer though. <laughs> now once everything passes your gel test, you can go ahead and bottle this. Now I've kind of moved this jar over here where you can see it better, hopefully. So we're taking our liquid. Filling up the jars, you want to leave about a half inch of head space. I usually do jellies and jams just about just as it starts up just as it starts up on the uh, ladle thing here Put your lid on just snug. Don't want it tight, just snug. I fill up all the jars before I add them to the canner. So that way they all go in at the same time. What's left isn't actually enough to fill this jar up, but I'm going to fill it up anyways and stick it in the refrigerator, and that's the first one that I'll eat. That's the way I do that. Oh my. And you can also lick the bowl if you want. Mmm, 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 that is so good. Alright. Next thing we need to do though is get these other jars. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. Or it's not in your way. So the next thing we need to do is put our other jars in here. So I'm basically using a canning jar. holder to drop these in here 
Now I'm also realizing that I'm off a little bit on the level, but it's going to raise up some because these jars take up volume of space, but I am going to have to add some more water, which is why I like to have this at a pretty good rolling temperature. I'll kind of show you what I mean here. The water level is just up to the seals and the seals actually need to be underwater. So let me add some more water. And now you can see that they are fully submerged in water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my timer on my stove for 10 minutes. And when that timer goes off, we remove these from the water and put them on a cooling rack and listen for the pop. Then we label the tops and that's it. Okay, so once they're done, you just pull them out of here and you stick them on a cooling rack. Now I'm going to leave this canner on because I got another batch of something else coming up. And once they are on the cooling rack, you will hear lids that start popping just like you just heard. <laughs> Probably won't hear a second. Anyways, I'll bring you back when these are done. Then the only thing we got to do now, we're going to wait on these to cool down fully. We're going to wipe off any excess water that's still on the lids. And then we're going to take and use a Sharpie marker. We're going to put what these are, the date we canned them, right here on the top of the lid. This is how you make rhubarb, strawberry, jelly, or jam. Technically, this is jam. <laughs> 